Hi guys. Hi everyone. I am Rebecca from Chem Knits and I'm here today with a Knit Picks haul that limped, limped its way here. I placed this order before New Year's and it arrived, I think it arrived on Thursday. So a couple days ago, but still it took a long, long time to get here. Now granted, it was only shipped on the 4th, but it still took you know, about two weeks to get here. Um, and to give nitpicks their credit though, when the package, like the tracking information stalled at one point, and so I actually called nitpicks and they're like, wait, why don't you wait like two more days? And if the tracking information hasn't updated, then we'll replace your order. Um, so they were very, very nice and helpful about that. But thankfully then after like the multi-day stall from like the tracking, um, it finally showed back up in the system and it made it here. But it has been so long, I don't even know what it is that I ordered. So I am a little curious to see what is inside this box. Um, I do think that there is like one like extra freebie thing because they had like an end of the year big yarn sale. So I'm really excited because I think I got some stuff that's outside my ordinary sort of orders in here. Uh, a few disclaimers. I am a Knit Picks affiliate, but I did purchase everything here myself. I made the product selections myself and yeah, and I let you guys know when I like something and when I don't. Um, my affiliate link is in the video description. And so if you do click on that, I do make a commission um, off of the sale as an affiliate. But, you know, in order to take advantage of any deals or anything I mentioned, you do not need to use my link. So there's my little disclaimers. And good morning, everybody. Uh, let's see what's going on right now. Oh, I think tweed yarns are all 30% off all of the, the different tweed lines, which I actually didn't double check to see if that included some of the new bear tweed yarns. I know like, well, the Andes tweed and city tweed and stuff are all on sale. Um, so that's going on right now. And Shine is the sale yarn of the month. Um, and so those, and I think the book sale is going on. I'm not sure, I didn't really check. <laughs> I'm just so excited to open up this box that I just sort of ran on over. All right, let's open, open this up. Do you ever wonder I open up from the bottom so that way I'm not showing my address everywhere. And tracking slip, I need that. Actually, I'm curious what it's going to say the date is. Okay, it does say 2019. I need that for taxes. <laughs> All right, you see the lovely bag, but you can see lots of bear yarn. If you guys are new to me, then uh, you know that I am an indie dyer, and so we do a lot of yarn dyeing here on the channel, which means I'm usually ordering beige, white, or bear yarn. And yes, it is cold. It is below zero outside. Maybe there'll be some snow dyeing coming on. It's basically like ice. I'll have to go and pick at it, but it's really cold right now, so I'm not going outside. Let's see what we got here. Ooh, all right, we've got some Chroma Twist Bulky. Um, I have featured this in a couple recent videos, and how many did I get? Uh-oh, there goes a uh, label. Four? Is there another one? No, I guess just four. Um, <laughs> Sorry guys. So Kurama Twist is a 70% superwash wool, 30% nylon yarn. It has a nice little sheen to it and it is really, really, really soft. And I'm not in focus. Focus on me, camera. Uh, and I really like dyeing it. I used it in the recent uh, Gatorade video and I used it in the November Chemnitz dye along. And it was on sale so I picked up some more. Uh, but I really like it. It's not doesn't show up on the bare yarns page, I don't think, but it is a technical bare option. The color is called natural, um, and you can find it just if you go to the like Chroma Twist bulky uh, page. Um, it's three ply, and yeah, I really really like it. Chroma has been a favorite of mine for a while, um, so although I haven't dyed 
Oh, I guess I have over dyed straight chroma, but, um, oh, it's a drizzle. Yeah, we had like, we had a snow and then it was like an icy storm. Ooh, all right, this one is exciting. I got some more Bear Andean Treasure. This one is 100% baby alpaca. And please tell me that I got three. Okay, I think I got four of these as well. Um, this is so, so, so soft and is normally fairly expensive. But I think I got it on, yeah, it was, I think it was one of the ones that was like 40% off in that last sale. Unfortunately, all these sale deals aren't going on anymore because I ordered this uh, <laughs> in December. But this is a wonderful yarn. I dyed it in the Hanukkah special with Easter egg dye tablets. And it took up this rain, these rainbow colors beautifully. So I'm really excited to hopefully dye something with a particular project in mind. And oh, oh. Maybe I should use this. There's like a cowl that I wanna make that has like all these different slip stitch patterns and you start with one color, then two, then three. I don't know if I'd have enough of this. Shoot. I was trying to decide what I wanted to use. I was like, oh, maybe I'll use like Swish Worsted. I have some of that in my stash. Hmm, hmm. But so anyway, I'm hoping this year to do a lot more dyeing of yarn with particular projects in mind. Um, Ah, so how come I'm just now receiving this order? Um, so it arrived on Thursday. I ordered it, I guess, on the 28th of December. The order was processed on the 29th. And then because of the holidays, it wasn't shipped until the 4th, which is reasonable. But uh, I think that in like some point when it was transferred to the post office, the post office like held on to it for almost a week without updating the tracking. So I think it was sort of lost in the mail before it limped its way here. So it's, this isn't like a nitpick's fault. And if anything, like they're like, if it still doesn't show up as missing, like we can resend it. And then if it shows up, we'll give you like a free shipping label to return the extra one. You know, so they were, they were very, very accommodating. Um, but we just picked a date to like, okay, if I don't, if it doesn't update by, you know, X date to call them back and they would send a replacement. And so they were really, really nice about it. Um, Um, have you ever put the yarn on a scale? Oh, I weigh my yarn all the time. Um, so um, there's a question, have I ever weighed the yarn because you've heard that Knit Picks shorts um, on the scale? I have received, like, things tend to be error on the side of over, actually. Um, occasionally something will be under. I forget what the acceptable industry standard is. The acceptable industry standard might be 10%. Um, but personally, if it's more than like five grams off, that's when like I would complain. Um, the, I'm trying to wonder where my scale is because maybe I'll go and weigh some right now. Um, let me go grab it. The, there was one time, oh, where did I go? Aha. Okay, so there was one time I ordered, it was actually a Knit Picks Chroma, and the 100 gram ball of yarn, I think it was 90 grams. And I wrote them because I was disappointed about that, and they actually replaced it. So they sent me a whole new one, and, with, you know, with their apologies. So, although I need like a box or something, because my scale is a little too small. Uh, da, 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 let me try to wind you into something so I can make you balance on my scale. All right. Let's weigh this is one of the Indian treasures. And this is coming in at 103.4 grams um, is this one. I would, I'm gonna try to, yeah, I can't really pick it up to show you because, <laughs> here, this is what I'll do. <laughs> oh, now it says 103.3, but then, so the tear. Yeah, so I weigh, I actually weigh my yarn um, 
I actually weigh my yarn a lot because I like to keep track of the yardage that I use for projects. So very like occasionally things might be a gram or two short, um, but most often things are like, are, or but things just as frequently end up being a gram or two over. So um, yeah, things end up being pretty, pretty reasonable. Um, but you know, if something is massively short, then by all means, let them know. And I'm sure that they'll do something right by, they'll do right by you. Um, but I think that, especially with thick and thin yarns, it's hard to know about the weight because I think there's a little more vari variability. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm bummed when, oh, my pleasure. Um, I'm bummed when things end up being too short and then you don't have enough for a project. Um, so I always try to like order extra myself, but um, I do also know that when you're dyeing yarn, um, the weight can change sometimes. So when I was doing the, the skeins for the Hanukkah sampler, all the ones that I was weighing to then make turn into mini skeins, five gram or 10 gram mini skeins, they all weighed, I think with one exception of the like, of the over 16 skeins that I like broke up, they all weighed over what they were supposed to. But I'm not sure how much the dyeing like contributed to that or anything. So I am always, always happy to answer questions. Yeah, lots of delayed order. There's been a problem with Nugistics, the carrier that Knitpix is using, very documented in the Knitpix Lovers group on Ravelry. Ah, um, thank you for, for that. Because I was, I was a little confused, but I will say I was very happy that they offered to send a replacement. And, um, you know, if I ended up with double, they were going to ask me to send the rest back, but they would have arranged for, <coughs> excuse me, that pickup. Uh, but so then, you know, she was like, I could put the replacement in now, but I think it might go through. And then, you know, I don't want you to have to deal with like, you know, trying to like get that the duplicates back. So that's why we decided to wait. Um, oh, thank you for watching. All right, let's see what else is in my haul. Okay, this is what I was really excited about and really, really sad that I didn't have. Oh, how cute is this rainbow tote bag? Um, there was a promotion going on, so I got a free tote bag with my order. Um, and so what is this normally? I think the tote bag normally retails for $15.99, but I got it for free. And the tote bags are really cute. They have like a little magnetic snap closure. And there's also like a teeny little pocket up here. And it is just so, so sweet. And um, I have another one, the like working on my PhD projects half done one. And I really like it. I like the long ha handle. Um, and yeah, it's, they're really, really fun. And it's a really like sturdy canvas. Um, it looks like they're made by ecobags.com. It's all recycled cotton. And yeah, I think that it's just like a cute little, um, cute little extra that I normally don't go and like buy stuff like this for myself, but uh, I am always, always happy when I can get one for free. They really do like, I mean, I use them. <laughs> like I have various totes around the house where like, this needs to be filmed. Like I need to film the end. This is a project I'm gonna die. Um, this is stuff ready to go in the shop and all that jazz. Okay, what else do I have in here? Um, aha. All right, I've got one, uh, yeah, two, three, four, five, six. I'm trying to get my autofocus. All right, I've got six hanks of Knit Picks gloss fingering. Um, and gloss is 70% merino, 30% silk. And it is soft and it ties like dream. I love it, love it, love it. And I think that this was also, um, yeah, this was on sale and I was really happy to grab more. Uh, when Knit Picks does some of these like blanket sales, I tend to wait, like if there's certain yarns that are 30% off or 40% off, 
or more, I tend to go for it at those sales. Nitpix rarely has like a take a percent off your whole order or something type sale. And when they do, so like if it's a yarn that I order a lot of, I'll wait for something. I'll either just get the 15% off bulk discount or, you know, I might wait for it to stack with a coupon. Um, but if something's only like 20% off and I usually buy it in bulk, then I won't buy it individually. So I have like a, I don't know threshold. I've, I've talked about, when, during the big sale, I talked about my sales strategy <laughs> and how I went about this. Um, oh man. Okay. What else did I get? Oh yeah. This was one. I don't know if this is sold out. Did I just get three? Yeah. Okay. I got three skeins of Bear Capretta yarn. Um, this is the discontinued Capretta. So this is the 80% fine merino, 10% cashmere, 10% nylon. The new Capretta is Superwash, which I think is awesome. And I'm really, really happy that there's a Superwash um, Merino Cashmere Nylon sock yarn now, because now you really can call it a sock yarn versus just a nice fingering weight yarn. Um, Cause I guess in my opinion, I would want sock yarns to be Superwash, but I grabbed some of this. I don't know if there's any of this left. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure there's any left of this one, but I wanted to grab some more before it went bye-bye. Um, but I'm really excited. I think I have a hank of the superwash and it still feels really soft and nice. But I think I grabbed three in case I wanted to do like a shawl or something out of it. Um, I see, so the UK weights and measures law for up to a 4.5% variation on a 50 gram ball so that each of the ball of wool is actually only approximately 50 grams within legal variation. Right, I believe I don't know if it's the same value, but I believe that there's some similar like rule of what's acceptable here. And the same thing with knots. I think that like one or two knots are allowed. Thankfully, I have only very rarely found knots in my nitpick yarns. And um, there was one in the Mighty Stitch um, video that I did recently, and I pointed that out because I saw it and I was like, oh, that's weird. Um, the only time I would really ever complain about a knot is if it was in a self-striping yarn or something that had a pattern like chroma or something where there's a color progression and it messed up the color progression. That would make me really, really mad. Otherwise, I'd sort of grumble and let it go. Um, but hello, hello. Okay, what else did I get? Ooh, I didn't know I ordered more of this. I mean, I guess I could have known because I could have looked. All right, I got two... Two more hanks of Bear Imagination yarn. This is another one that I think is only available as the Bear yarn now. They used to have a whole hand painted line around it. So I'm not sure if it's gonna like stay or disappear, but it's one that I love. This one is 50% merino, 25% super fine alpaca, 25% nylon. It is so, so soft. Which did I do with this? Oh, I dip dyed this um, in Rit Liquid Dyes in the Hanukkah Special. Um, I've also done it in Broken Violet in a live stream, and it's just really, really, really soft, and I really want to play around with it a lot more. It looks a lot like palette. Um, yeah, so if the yarn was thrown out, it would make the yarn really, really expensive, exactly. Um, so actually the scarf I'm wearing now is Knit Picks Palette, which is the Peruvian Highland wool. And it used to be one of my favorites to dye. And the reason why I stopped liking it for dyeing yarn, even though I love knitting with it because it's perfect for color work, is that the strands are a little bit like sticky in the sense that like, it's not quite felted, but they'll start to like stick together from the heat. And it's very easy to pull them apart. It's just not nearly as pretty. Um, because I think it's just because of the little bit of halo. I suppose technically that's light felting, but given that they come apart with no um, pressure, I like, or like almost no tension, like it's not something that I get concerned with. But anyway, the imagination reminds me of that and it did not really like clump together or anything, but and it does have some strength because of the nylon. I wonder how it would block, but it would be so soft to have around the face. But again, like, I like the uh, the Peruvian Highland wool. I wear a lot of like wool of the Andes hats and scarves and stuff. So I really, really like it. Um. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is so cold. 
but actually I'm wearing uh, my color affection scarf and I'm actually working on another one because I decided to try to finish up some unfinished projects and that one I started like maybe after Lucas was born so a long time ago <coughs> all right and last but not least I have two skeins of the Knit Picks Bare Hair Yarn. This is the 80% wool, 20% Angora. Um, this is another one I featured in the Chemnitz Hanukkah special. I hand painted it and it picked up tight beautifully and I want to explore it more and so I needed to get some more to have in my stash. Some of these I probably had some more of but the prices were so good that I was like, I should grab some now because this is a better price than buying a 20 pack, which is usually how, like, how I gauge. Like if I find myself wanting to dye the same yarn over and over, then that's when I decide, okay, I should get it as a 20 pack. Um, but you know, I, I have a lot of bear yarn right now, a lot. So I have a lot of dyeing to do this year. <laughs> um, I'm really, really excited. I have some really fun projects planned and I am hoping to vary up the yarn bases a little bit more. It's hard because as an experimentalist, I like sticking to the yarn bases I know the best, like the Stroll and the Wool of the Andes and the Swish because I've tried them and there's so many different conditions that I have something to compare it to internally. So when I go and try something that's more new to me that I haven't tried before on a different yarn base, it, there's another variable in there that I'm like, oh, I'm not sure if this effect is because of the technique or if it's because of the yarn base. But I still like want to try to explore and experiment and yeah, I feel like that there's a lot that we can learn. And so I really appreciate when you guys ask questions and leave comments because it really does help me sort of narrow down my list of things to do. When is my next live die? Um, maybe this week? So there's a new video that requires a lot more editing that I need to film. It's been on my list a long time, and I guess it's not entirely a surprise. I want to do like a, like a dyeing with food coloring 101. Um, I have a lot of old videos, but I'm not very good at always going back to the basics and saying like, hey, you need heat, acid, protein-based yarn, um, and then like the food coloring. And so that's something that I need to work on, and I want a bunch of B-roll for it. Um, I need to do a bunch of b-roll for it so I thought that I might do a live stream while I'm filming the b-roll rather than going back through some old footage to try to find the clips I need I can just refilm the clips I need but then maybe do a live stream at the same time so that's something that uh, might be happening this week um, I saw a question about black beans um, will we be doing any more black bean dyeing yes I will be doing some more black bean dyeing um, Yes, I did some notes on that that I've learned that the reasons why I got more of a brown versus a blue were maybe twofold. One, that I heated it, and two, I guess there's I should have removed the liquid from the top and left some of the sludge on the bottom, and that could have contributed more to the brown. Certainly mordants could help. Um, I think mordants will definitely help. I'm sort of waiting for the weather to warm back up and then to go wild with mordants on a lot of things. Um, mainly because a lot of the mordant techniques have you soaking stuff in the mordant for days and I don't really want to have that out and open in the kitchen where I could get knocked over and spilled. Doing the black beans soaking was nerve-wracking enough that someone was going to knock it over. Um, and so if I can then have things like outside in the shed or the garage without worrying about them freezing, uh, that's one of my thoughts on that. Um, but I am definitely going to be exploring some more mordants this summer. Um, oh, wait, there was a question. Can you tell me if the 100% Peruvian Highland wool is soft? Um, I like palette. I make, I like it for color work. I use it for mittens. Here I'm wearing it in a scarf. It is more of like a workhorse yarn, so it's not, say, as soft as like a merino, but um, it's certainly like... I, 
I like it in scarves and hats and stuff, and I wear it against my skin. So it's one that I personally don't find it rough by any stretch. It's not as, um, you know, if I was going to compare it to the Andean Treasure, which I just want to, like, keep rubbing against my face, it's not that soft. But, like, it doesn't scratch or itch, and it's comfortable and cozy, and I like it. I've used it in a lot of shawls and, and stuff. So, uh, yeah, there is that. How did the, the pink grapefruit turn out? <laughs> um, oh, the, those yarns came out great. And I'm going to show the last speckled one in the recap of the January Chemnitz Dialogue. Um, and I also have, there's some leftover dyes. So I maybe, I'm not sure if this Friday or next Friday, there'll be a bonus with some more of the yellow and pink coming out. Um, but no problem. Uh, wait, especially with two kids. Yes, especially with the two kids about, uh, and the dog. Uh, it's amazing. I had my spinning wheel out for a while and then I finally put it away. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we'll see. Um, maybe, maybe on Wednesday I have to figure out, um, uh, I have to, I haven't made my whole schedule for the week. I've got like starting to need to do some like accounting and less fun stuff. But let me show off. Uh, but I feel like this was before the whole fade craze or maybe the beginning of the whole fade craze. And this pattern went viral, the color affection shawl. Um, I absolutely love it. And this was actually a stash busting um, project because I had all this palette yarn in my stash. I used to buy clearance kits from Knit Picks. Um, just to get the yarn for my stash of stuff that I used a lot. So Palette and Wool of the Andes are two that I use all the time. Um, and so I had all this in my stash. But then, and I wore it as a scarf a lot. But then my coat was black and this was navy. So it's like, oh, I need to make this in new colors. So I'm doing one in gray, teal, and purple. My new coat is teal. But I'm finishing it up anyway. I'm finally on the three color section. And so I'm hoping to finish that up. And yeah, and then make new more time for more knitting projects this year. Um, so that way, like, yeah, to give myself time and to plan projects that I can work on while maybe I'm editing and stuff too, to sort of, I mean, I've still been creating and creative with the yarn dyeing, but, uh, yeah, I just want to like have more finished things that I accomplished this year versus like things that like I have to finish, like a hat and oh, I need to get that hat pattern up. It's a basic pattern that I've been like pulling pictures today, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's been a nice start to the year, but oh, I'm really, really excited. Ooh, maybe I need to get another hank of the Andean treasure. <gasps> maybe I have could have another one. I'll have to check. If I have a fifth one, then I totally want to make that scarf out of this. Sorry, Swish Worsted. I was like, it's just, it's the, the pattern. And once, like, I'll post it in the Chemnitz Lab Facebook group once I'm, like, starting to, like, plan out the colors so that way, I'm, like, maybe people can help me decide. But, uh, yeah, I, I want to do some more, like, Okay, I want to make this project. Now I want to, this is how I want it to kind of look, and these are the kinds of colors I want to dye for it. And yeah, try some of that. We'll see. I feel like doing the Chemnitz dye alongs has really challenged me um, as a fiber artist to try to go for specific colors based on a photo or evoke a feeling from a photo and stuff. So yeah, I'm looking for ways to challenge myself but maybe you know with a fun pattern we can do like a die along slash knit along kind of thing so a lot of us can work on it together um and that'll keep me knitting because i'll have accountability <laughs> oh but yeah i i'm very excited so uh i hope i hope knit picks uh figures out their uh shipping issues that one of you guys mentioned, but I'm glad, I'm glad that it actually made it here. So how many skeins did I get? I'm going to count this as one because those are each 50 grams. Two, three, four, 
Oh wait, I can just look. It's 10. Uh, okay, so about 20. Oh, well, that's not bad. That is not bad. And these are all like expensive ones. So you're inspired by my black bean post. Ooh, did you get a blue when you used heat? Because so when I went to go film the black bean video, I was like, oh, I'm going to go and boil the beans and then add the yarn. And then I go and I look at like a blog post. And I'm like, ooh, I'm supposed to do this at room temperature for days. And so that shifted my whole like filming schedule because I try to get the Die Pop PS episodes, which the PS stands for Patreon special. These are the videos that I give the Chemnitz patrons early access to. And so I try to film it like first thing in the month so that way I can get it out as soon as possible. And but that added like some days to the filming schedule. So I was like, oh no. But I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. And yeah, I have to need, I need a good system for stash management. Oh, it started to sink, to sink. Mine didn't start to ferment really. I kept it out of natural light. Um, I mean, it was on sort of like a chest freezer, and so it didn't really start to smell. But I imagine that sitting for days, like with the yarn, that it might start getting a little ripe. <laughs> but um, it can be worth it in the end, I suppose, with the yarn and stuff. So I definitely want to give that another go. Um, I'm saving up more onion skins and avocados to give that a go again. Um, Ooh, it was a gray sage green. Ooh, that's pretty. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. And oh, I'm gonna go in and talk with uh, Lucas's pre-K class about what I do. And so I've been trying to like, I really would love to do a demonstration, but I don't think that I, like, I don't wanna be, especially because like food coloring, it's so like kid friendly and easy to do. But without like an easy heat source, I think it would be hard and messy. So I've been like trying to rack my brain. I might just bring like yarn and pictures. But I'd really like to just like do a project with the class. But I'm like, yeah, I've been like just trying to think of like what could I do. Um, but I'm, oh, uh, like I mean I could bring a heat source, but I don't. I'm worried about like the safety and like I don't think I'd be allowed to bring a heat source into uh the classroom but i might bring my spinning wheel <laughs> so i can demonstrate something i don't know i'm still like thinking i'm really yeah i'm like ooh, i could do like 10 million things i'm like okay what's more realistic dial it back <laughs> but anyway uh thank you guys so much for joining me for a little bit of like unboxing and chat um, again, yeah, no, I've been taught, I've been chatting with the teachers and they're like, there's no pressure. And I'm like, I know, but it's cool. <laughs> um, but <coughs> I'm thinking non-messy is probably the way to go. Um, but we, uh, I'm going to thank you so much for joining me in boxing. Again, if you want to pick up some Knit Picks yarns, my affiliate link is in the video description. Uh, it really, uh, helps out. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think, I, again, we're worried about the safety of bringing the hot plate and that doesn't cool off very fast. So, uh, I'd be stuck waiting for a while, <laughs> but the spinning wheel, I've never tried transporting it. That might be doable. Um, or I could just bring like a lot of like stuff and to do like a show and tell. Um, I think Lucas would want me to bring like. I don't know what Lucas would want me to do. <laughs> I feel like maybe I should have him stand up and talk to the class about how to do it. And that would be hilarious. But anyway, um, speaking of the kids, they are home right now and they have let me do this live stream. Well, they're resting, so it's nap time. Uh, but I was like holding my breath to see how many interruptions we'd have today. <laughs> But I better go before they do get up um, so I can get this yarn put away and stuff. But yeah, hopefully I'll do some live yarn dyeing later this week. And otherwise, there's a new episode of Dye Pot Weekly coming out tomorrow. And I think you guys will think it's pretty great. 
Um, so thank you so, so much for joining me. I love chatting with you guys and oh. <laughs> I'll talk with you guys soon. Bye everyone.